You guys, welcome. You know, what a pleasure it's been for me to create this presentation for you and the help of the IRG team has been amazing. I just can't thank you guys enough. And I want you to know, um, I really admire IRG's holistic approach to preventing injuries, as well as the different healing modalities they use to give patients the best path to recovery. It truly is something I haven't seen in all the different uh, different health professionals that I've had the pleasure of working with. IRG really is unique, and I'm honored to be part of this presentation and uh, to have this platform with them. Thank you. And for all of you guests here tonight, I really am so glad to have you joining us. And I congratulate you for taking a moment to focus your attention on your great, most valuable asset, your health, your most valuable asset for sure, right? And then we can all agree, I think, that we need to feel well in order to live well. So, you know, it's wonderful to have you here. And I really hope that tonight, you leave with at least one or two nuggets that you will be able to take action on to improve your health and your vitality in your life. And I'll just take a quick moment to, to share a little bit about me and how I got here. Um, I am a mom of two boys and they're now grown, but when they were younger, they both had a lot of unexplained health problems that you know took us years to get to the bottom of it. Six years, in fact. And our older son had missed, um, as a freshman in high school, 35 days of school before Christmas. It had gotten truly catastrophic, but no one could help us. And we just were feeling desperate. I finally found a guy who was a nutritional biochemist who helped us through nutrition and supplementation through a very you know, rigorous course. But after two months, uh, my son came downstairs after having been sick yet again and dressed for school though, and I was all excited, great, you're ready to go back. And he looked at me and he said, you know, mom, I think it's gone. I'm like, okay, I really hope so. But the point here is it was gone, whatever it was, uh, his body was out of balance in some way. And with food and supplementation, after six years of consulting with every kind of specialist you can think of and all sorts of tests, all kinds of expenses, we finally found the answer with food and supplementation. So you can only imagine, you know, this whole like light went on in my mind and I'm like, okay, I've got to find out more about this. And so that was about 20 years ago. And I have been on a journey of health and nutrition ever since learning as much as I can to help anyone in my circle to avoid the, uh, the challenges that our family had. And we were just blessed to be able to find our way through those challenges. And I just, my heart breaks for the thought that there could be people out there who may not have been in a position to get to the bottom of it the way that we were. So that's really what's driven my mission. And so today I consult with individuals in health and nutrition and weight management, as well as help to implement those wellness strategies in health professionals' offices. So that's uh, just to give you a little bit of background how I got to where I'm sitting today. I am a, um, a, a concerned mom, like, uh, like many of you other parents out there. I am not a licensed health professional, but I am extremely well educated, I will tell you. I have um, attended a whole range of courses and hundreds and hundreds of hours of training. And so with that, let's begin our program for tonight to talk about our, our strategies. Oh, so here we are. I've gone through the welcome. So now I'd like to just give you a bit of a preview of what we'll be covering tonight. We'll be talking about uh, the five pillars of health, which include, and I say the five pillars, you guys, but what I'll add to that is there are a lot more pieces of the puzzle that exist, but in this short presentation tonight, I'm going to just hit on what I feel are the most critical ones, the biggest ones. So let's, uh, let's take our attention to those for now. Weight management, avoiding tobacco, uh, movement, eating, and uh, in that category, we have several different concerns. One is the decreased nutritional value of our food, which we'll be learning about the impact of pharmaceutical interventions on our micronutrients in our body, uh, gut health and supplementation and its role in supporting your optimal health. Sleep, of course, is another 
truly critical pillar that we need to address so we can move on from here and begin to go over those categories. If you don't make time for your wellness, folks, you will be forced to make time for your illness. I like to begin the conversation with that thought because I think a lot of us take for granted that our legs will work and that our brain will work and that we will just be able to do what we need to do every day. But I'm afraid that we all know somebody in our lives important to us who may have had a calendar full of commitments that had to be broken because something unexpected happened to them, right? And that, and uh, when your health fails you, then everything else has to stop until you can recover from whatever has happened to you, right? So really what I want you to think about and take to heart is that you can do things, little things, that will make the biggest impact on your health and allow you to keep those commitments on your calendar and you won't have that disruption in your life. So let's move on and learn more about that. The five pillars we just touched on and we'll get uh, started, I think, with weight. If We can move on to that. So one of the easiest ways to uh, assess your situation, if you will, is to check your BMI, body mass index. So it's a quick and easy way to assess your body's uh, situation, if you will. So, you know, as you can see the slide, we talk about net, that maintaining a healthy weight is absolutely critical for um, overall health and it redu reduces the risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and high blood pressure for sure, among many other things. Um, uh, the, the BMI is, as we said, an inexpensive, it's an easy screening to help you determine what, where you fall in the uh, range that you see in front of you here. What I will say is that it doesn't necessarily give you a good guide as to the uh, content of fat versus muscle on your body, which is something that we really want to know more about. Uh, but BMI is a great, easy starting point for you if that's what you want to do to just like, okay, do I need to pay attention to this? Let's move on and learn more about how this all might work. So one of the things that I like to focus on besides that, as I say, BMI is a helpful kind of an indication, but what we like to talk about in, in my realm is a, a variety of combined uh, strategies. So low glycemic impact eating is one of them. This again, we, you know, the title of the presentation talked about science-based strategies, and this is among the many that I like to turn to with decades of research proving that it's a very helpful healthy way for all of us to eat, by the way, not just those of us who are trying to get um, maybe less around the middle or wherever our problem spot might be. Um, it actually is just a healthy way to eat for everyone. It stabilizes your blood sugar throughout the day. And so your body is burning fat for fuel throughout the day, which is really, really helpful to keep your body uh, optimally healthy. Body composition is where the I feel like the next step is after you've looked at your BMI, body composition is really where the rubber meets the road. It's how much fat do I have versus how much muscle. So you want to know, um, you know, do I have excess fat? So like, for example, a person can weigh a healthy weight, 125 pounds, five foot five, five foot six, whatever. And you think, okay, that person doesn't need to do anything about that. They're their health is good. They may fit in a good size shoe, gosh, shoe, <laughs> pants and skirt and whatever else, right? Um, but what, what we might see in that person is they might have excess fat on their bodies and they are what we call skinny fat. So it really isn't um, contingent upon you as to what size you wear or how much you weigh. You do? Really, how much muscle do you have? And somebody I think has come on and needs to mute, if you would, please. Thank you. So part of what we do in order to burn fat for fuel and have more muscle, of course, is to get regular exercise, which we'll be talking more about. Science-based supplementation has a role here as well, as uh, many of you may have experienced throughout your lives. It, it, if you are a yo-yo dieter, if you are a person like me, who I have in my life carried 40 pounds more than I have on me today, 
And, you know, so I've done the up and the down, the Weight Watchers, the calorie counting, the meal skipping, a variety of strategies. And um, I, I end up and again adding the weight back on again and sometimes plus, right? And so what that does over time is it undermines your body's metabolism. And so that makes it harder. The next time you try to get healthy again, it makes it harder. And so over time, this becomes a very discouraging process. And I find that a lot of people are prone to want to give up on themselves. And I, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to do that. Um, there are so many strategies that we can help you with that aren't fads, that are proven uh, strategies that will help you to regain control and reset some of those problems that your body's having. Education, of course, is critical throughout the process of getting to a healthy weight, because if you don't understand why you're choosing this food versus that food, then it makes it harder sometimes to make the best choices. I think we'll all agree on that. So um, those are the really the, the major areas that I focus in when it comes to getting to a healthy weight, if you can move on from here, Amber. This is a graphic that just shows you the, um, the impact, if you will, of this uh, low glycemic impact eating. If you see in the blue a part of this arrow, that is where your body is burning fat for fuel. It's where your body is operating at its best. Your brain is clear, your heart and all your organs are happy and running well, and your body's humming along uh, like a car on, on premium gas, right? And, um, but when you are uh, spiking your blood sugar, so let's just say like I did for a long time, I worked in an insurance office. And so I had a fairly sedentary lifestyle. Plus there was always some kind of treat in the kitchen, in the break room. That, and so I would go in and there would be muffins or there'd be bagels or whatever it would be. And I would grab one of those and my blood sugar would spike. Now I knew nothing about any of this stuff at the time. What happens when your blood sugar spikes is that your um, cells, which all need blood glucose in order to, to fuel them, we need that, but they're, when you have too much and, you're, and your cells are like, I got, I got no room for this stuff, where do you think it goes? It goes to your fat cells to be stored for later. That's our evolutionary um uh, adaptation so that we have the extra fuel for when we might not have the fuel on hand, we have the fat that we're carrying. That's what we do when we have too much blood sugar in our blood and our, our cells are already saturated. On the other side, you're, you can valley your blood sugar. That can happen sometimes after you've had that muffin or donut, and then all of a sudden you feel that drop and you're like all you you could fall asleep almost right and that leads you to make yourself want to run and go get another one doesn't it or a piece of chocolate or something or a cup of coffee all this stuff it throws you on this never ending back and forth doesn't it but the other thing that you sometimes can do and i did this as a strategy at one point in my life is skip meals because you think okay well if i just cut my calories back i'll be good so maybe you eat breakfast but you skip lunch and then you have dinner and you think that's great. I've cut out my calories at lunch. Well, no, what, what has happened, what is now happening is your brain, again, an, ev an evolutionary adaptation, your brain signals that you're in a famine. You know, you're not nourished. You don't have fuel. So what does it do? It signals for your body to hold fat. So you're burning other tissue for fuel, not fat. And unfortunately, again, this sets you into that unfortunate, you know, circle where you are holding fat, not burning it off, and you're not getting that healthy body that you want. So this is really, um, I think, a nice visual that helps you to understand the concept of low glycemic impact eating. And, and this is really what I think most of us like to focus on for healthy lifestyle in all ways. So we can move on from here. Moving on to tobacco avoidance, okay? So this is one of the most significant things that any of us can do. And this doesn't just include smoking, by the way. This includes chewing tobacco. It includes um, 
I don't know what other kinds of tobacco you smoke it, you chew it, whatever other kinds there might be that I don't know about. You don't want it in your life. Um, it certainly is um, uh, irrelevant what age you are. And for that matter, I'd like to drive home the point, you guys, that it, at any age, you can make significant changes in your health that will make you feel better and make you more active, no matter how old you are. So never at any point should you say, I'm already this old, I've made it this far, I didn't get this or that wrong with me yet, let me just keep doing it. Well, you know, get away from it and you'll be surprised. Look at what's on this slide. Within one to nine months of quitting, coughing and shortness of breath decreases. Your lungs and airways are more able to handle mucus, clean the lungs and reduce the risk of infection. And within a year, your risk of coronary heart disease is half of the rate of somebody that's using tobacco. That is huge. I think we're all well aware that coronary disease is one of the top causes of death, if not the top cause of death here in the United States. And we certainly don't need to do something to add to the risk that, that we already carry. And I love this little poster on the side where you can see a whole realm of different other benefits that we all would gain from stopping smoking. And there's so many uh, really wonderful programs you can use, including just saying to yourself, do you know what? I'm important enough that I need to do this now. And so you just quit. Sometimes it works. So I encourage you to look in that direction as well. We can move from here. Movement, of course, is the next huge thing. Uh, this is another area I think a lot of us have been hearing about. You know, we hear about sitting is the new smoking. We can connect that transition from smoking to uh, movement, right? Um, as far as its impact negatively on our health. And we're learning more and more about that. And um, so movement is medicine. Aim for something every day. If you don't wanna call it exercise, just call it movement. I know we're all in different spectrums of that fitness uh, commitment level, right? Some of us are like, I haven't done it in years. I'm, you know, I'm now, um, gee, I'm, about nine years into my recovery from being a non-exerciser, I had my first son and then it was like, I was in the best shape of my life, had my first son and that was it. I didn't exercise for 25 years or something. I mean, it was crazy. I just didn't, uh, it was crazy. But the point is that you don't have to say, just cause I haven't been doing this for a long time that I I never can do it again, you can get some help. And what I would recommend you do is see um, IRG. I think we're gonna see on another slide. There's a very special service that they offer to help people assess their abilities and, and to help them to move into a program that will be beneficial without hurting you if you're just getting started. Some of you may be well into your um, exercise commitment. That's great, but just keep it um, consistent. You don't be a weekend warrior. You do a little bit every day. Take a, take a half an hour and walk outside if you can, if you're at work, you know, take part of your lunch hour. For people who are, um, you know, reluctant to worry about weights and resistance training, that is something that I have learned is extremely important. And I took this out to show you, this is a resistance band and they come in all sorts of different, you know, resistances, if you will. And it's light, it's just, you know, a rubber type of band or latex or whatever it's made of. And you can use it to, you know, just exercise your legs, your arms, all parts of your body without a lot of expense or worrying about real weights. If you're one of those people that doesn't want to deal with weights, there's so many great ways for you to do that, um, that extra work that'll give you those dividends. Look at what these dividends by the way, are heart health, weight loss, that you know, fat loss, stress reduction, helping your mood. How many times have you realized after you like had a really cranky whatever moment and you go outside and you take a walk and you come back and you feel like a new person again? Um, it improves your memory and your productivity. So um, a lot of times I hear people will say, I don't have time, my, my work schedule, uh, this and that, I can't exercise. I'm here to tell you that if you were to take that 30 minutes and take a walk or do a little stretching or work on your resistance band or what it might be, you will find that you are 
cooking with gas when you get back to your desk or whatever it is, whatever your work situation may be, you'll be more focused, you'll be more directed. And I venture to say you'll get everything done in the same amount of time, even though you took that little bit of time off. Um, so do remember that uh, that our friends at IRG are here to help you to kickstart that movement goal and 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 get you on track without injury. That is just really the goal we all have, right? Let's move on to hear the next step. Now, I want you to really take this one to heart because this is another, uh, I, I guess I'd call it a speed bump that I have with my clients is they'll say, I, I'd love to exercise Elaine, but the problem is I've got bad knees or um, my feet are terrible. I'm really sore and I can't do this and I can't do that. Don't let pain keep you from living a healthy life. Don't do it. These guys at IRG are experts at helping you to assess the problem and work through it. Look at this free injury screens. This is an amazing benefit that IRG is offering. And I encourage you, if you are that person who says, I don't want to embark on this exercise program because or a movement program, whatever you want to call it, because of pain, please see IRG and attend to that because you might find it's easier to address than you think. Let's move on. Okay, so I'm gonna now take a moment and I'm going to play a short video for you. It's about eight minutes long. The reason I like to do this is that it, no, number one, breaks up the monotony of hearing from me the whole time. And number two, it's a great way to uh, relay some really important information in an efficient way about vitamins and nutrients and how they interact with your body. So I'd like for us to begin that video and just to sit back and relax, and I'll be back with you in a moment. We are all taught that healthy eating and healthy living is simple, right? All you have to do is eat more of the good stuff and less of the bad. But what if the good stuff isn't as good as we think it is? What if the very labels we read and base our purchasing decisions on are not giving us the information we really need? Today's food labels are based on the recommended daily allowance, or RDA for short. RDAs are not meant to provide you with the amount of a nutrient you need to be healthy but only the minimum amount you need to prevent a deficiency or disease. So even if you eat 100% of the RDA of every single nutrient, there is no guarantee that it will keep you healthy. Keep in mind, there is not a one-size-fits-all formula to your nutritional needs. Individual lifestyle factors including stress, exercise, smoking, dietary choices, medications, sleep, age, and sun exposure can significantly impact your need for particular nutrients. Perhaps this is why so many doctors, nutritionists, and health experts recommend daily supplementation with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and more. Even foods without labels like fruits and vegetables aren't as nutritious as we expect them to be. Scientists have compared the nutritional levels of today's fruits and vegetables with those from 40 years ago and found that today's produce contains up to 59% less nutrients such as iron, zinc, protein, calcium, and vitamin C. This is another reason why so many people are turning to nutritional supplementation. But it's important to realize that not all supplements are created equal. Did you know that many of the most popular vitamins and minerals sold on store shelves today contain artificial binders, fillers, and coatings that make it difficult, sometimes even impossible, for your body to break down the nutrients so you can use them? Inflammation. We are hearing more and more about inflammation in the news and from our medical communities. Poor gut health and chronic high levels of inflammation are the foundation for many disease states. We tend to eat a diet that causes a lot of inflammation. Looking at the screen now on the right hand side, we see what makes up most of our diet. A lot of fast food, fried food, hydrogenated oils and trans fats, processed foods, white sugar and sweets, synthetic sweeteners, red meat, wheat products, and dairy products. Now, look at foods that eliminate inflammation. Things like nuts, avocado, spinach, most of our vegetables, preferably eaten in a raw or lightly steamed state. Many of us don't eat a lot of these foods. So while we are eating a diet that causes inflammation, we may be fueling disease states that cause even more inflammation. We also hear about antioxidants in the news, and for good reason. 
Antioxidants help fight off something called free radical damage. Our body can handle a little bit of free radical damage, but if we get excessive amounts of this, it can lead to or further certain disease states that we see on the screen. Now, while we look over this list, keep in mind that it's not comprehensive. There are actually over 200 different disease states that have a connection to free radical damage. We may wonder how does an antioxidant help with the eyes, the immune system, joints, skin, our blood vessels and cardiovascular health? How can one group do so much? That's because when we get a good antioxidant into the body or a complementary group of antioxidants, they will help slow down the free radical damage. Just like fiber cleans up waste products in the intestines, antioxidants clean up the free radical waste in the cells. Substances that generate free radicals can be found in the food we eat, the medicines we take, the air we breathe, and the water we drink, according to the Huntington's Outreach Project for Education at Stanford University. B vitamins are important because according to the doctor's complete guide to vitamins and minerals, a B vitamin deficiency may show up with things like bloating and gas. If, no matter what we eat, we just feel bloated, we could have a B vitamin deficiency. Spotty hair loss, lower back pain, numbness in the lower extremities and the hands, heartburn, constipation and diarrhea, headaches, maybe migraines, a sore throat, sores inside the mouth, anger management problems, mood swings, depression, fatigue, insomnia, having an eye start to twitch or when we go to sleep at night and our fingers start to twitch, all of these things could be signs of B vitamin deficiency. This makes sense once we realize what B vitamins do. You see, B vitamins are critically important for the metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins into energy. Furthermore, they're important for red blood cell formation. They help with tissue repair and are also vitally important for nervous function. When it comes to calcium, most people realize that we have to have calcium for strong bones. What they don't realize is that bone is pretty active in the body. What this means is that it is a metabolically active tissue. Our bones are actually being built and broken down constantly. They are not just stagnant. If our dietary calcium levels get too low, we can pull calcium from the bones in order to keep the blood levels of calcium what they need to be. Because of this, it's very important that we get adequate levels of calcium from our diet. And it's very difficult to get enough through our foods. However, a lot of people don't realize that calcium is also critically important for muscle function. You see, when a muscle cell receives a signal from nerves telling it to fire, the cell responds by allowing a flood of calcium into that cell. If our calcium levels are abnormal, either too high or too low, the process can be interrupted and that can lead to muscle spasms. This may be part of the reason why so many people that supplement with calcium notice that their muscles do not cramp as often as well as feel better at night when they lie down. Furthermore, calcium is critically important for our nerves. The regulation of the balance of calcium inside and outside the nerve cell is involved in helping control the flow of sodium in and out. This sodium flow is how nerves conduct signals to and from the brain. So if you have subpar calcium levels, your nerves will not properly transmit their signals. Has this ever happened to you? You just can't stop eating. You are eating and eating, your stomach gets full and sends a message to the brain to stop. However, 10, 20, 30 minutes later, you are hungry again and eating again. Why? because the brain does not have enough of the nutrients it needs, so it resends signals to keep eating. And keep in mind, we know that many foods that are not nutrient-dense are processed foods and have a high sugar or gluten content, or both, that contribute to inflammation and disease. Over the last 50 years, the amount of minerals and vitamins in conventionally grown foods and vegetables has declined steadily, as documented in Scientific American. Adding to that, if you take certain prescription or over-the-counter drugs, they may deplete vitamins and minerals. Many of our health professionals know this, as you can see here in the Physician's Desk Reference Guide. Just something as simple as an antacid might affect your B vitamins, calcium, iron, and zinc levels. 
Therefore, it is even more important that if you take over-the-counter medications or prescription medications, you get certain micronutrients into your body. This is why you may want to look into a good, high-quality multivitamin, one that your body can absorb. Not only does a good multivitamin help support the immune system and cardiovascular function, it does something that's pretty critical. It helps turn your food into energy. Beautiful. Thank you. So um, that's the end of the video and a lot of great information in there. I learned a lot. I know the first time I saw that about a lot of different things, um, including the fact that our the nutritional value of our food has dropped down so much. Um, but one of the things that that I wanted to ask you guys is, did you know that, you know, when you're craving sugar often, it's because there are um, bad bugs in your digestive tract that are calling for that sugar. So um, there's a lot of a lot going on in our bodies. And so the most important thing um, I want you to take away from the, the video is that those nutrients that we talked about are essential nutrients, B vitamins, um, calcium. These are things that we have to ingest. Our body cannot make them. So if, if we don't get enough in our food, which you know we know can be challenging to get enough and to absorb it is the other challenge some of us aren't good absorbers because of our uh challenges with our gut health so it's a really uh it's a puzzle sort of like where you want to put all the pieces together and then ultimately when you restore that homeostasis in your body maybe your reliance on some of those supplements cuts back a bit because now you're you're absorbing it more efficiently, you might be eating a lot better, and you may just need a little bit of that extra backup from time to time. The other thing I want you to know, um, if you didn't catch it because that video moved along so quickly, is that labels on packaged foods are permitted to be up to 25% off in terms of the numbers that you're seeing on there. So numbers that are shown for sodium and for sugar, can be wildly uh, inaccurate. And in fact, some years ago, a news uh, station pulled certain products off the shelf and had them tested and found that some of them were up to 70%, 70, 70 percent off in certain of those categories of things that you want to know about fat, sugar, salt. Um, which is really terrible. So what I would say to you is if you have a a situation where you are concerned about your health and you really want to make a difference going forward, and it's very important for you to do that in, a, in an efficient way, the first thing I would do is eat whole foods. Um, and the other thing I might do is contact IRG and ask for a consultation with Julie Mahler, uh, who is their registered dietitian and who you may have seen if any of you have looked on IRG's YouTube channel. She's got some beautiful presentations on there and can very, um, you know, beautifully add in some perspective for you and the best ways for you to move forward with a healthy um, eating program. Um, whole foods, right? Uh, stay away from the packages. And I think that, oh, I did want to pitch one other thing before I go on, is IRG is having a no added sugar challenge that started last week for the next uh, four weeks. So three more weeks or so left in there. I'm sure the details are available on their website, and I would encourage you to look at that. They've probably got some really good tips on how to avoid added sugar in your diet. That would be another really big win for you. So I'll take you uh, on that path as well. I, I didn't, if you don't mind going back, I didn't quite hit the last slide. So um, I wanted, we talked about whole foods. I wanted to also mention about avoiding inflammatory foods. Dairy and gluten can be highly inflammatory. We are all different, right? I mean, none of us are exactly the same. So certainly one thing for, you know, might bother you, it may not bother me. But the other thing that I'll say to you is sometimes you don't know something's bothering you. Like if I took this pen and I started going like this on my hand, you not really cause me any problems right now, right? But if I kept doing this for a month, for a year, 
for another year. What do you think would happen to my hand? I bet you eventually I'd get like a, a serious wound here over time, right? I didn't notice that it was bothering me at first though, did I? And so what I'll say to you is there could be things that you're doing that are interfering with your health inside that you aren't aware of, but doesn't mean that there isn't something going on. So what I'll say is if you have some, some joint discomfort, if you have some head fog going on or whatever your, your, your worry, consider eliminating dairy for a month and see how you feel. If you don't notice any change, consider you know, getting rid of gluten in your diet for a period of time and see if that makes a difference. It's worth experimenting, you guys, rather than turning to medications. As you saw, those medications can, can sort of compound the problem in some ways, right? And not to say that there isn't a role for those medications. I am here to tell you, though, that there might be ways for you to head them off at the past by taking some control over your lifestyle habits. Red meat is, um, you know, obviously a lot of us love it and, you know, it's fine, but don't uh, consume it more than a couple times a week. And I always love to um, really recommend um, grass fed and grass finished beef is really the best. It's high in omega threes and it's much healthier for you if you can get it. Um, caffeine is an issue. I think we all know that uh, excessive amounts of caffeine aren't good for us and hydration this is low hanging fruit this one you guys if you're one of those people that feels a little overwhelmed about all this information and you're feeling like it's just too much for you to handle at one time this hydration issue to me is low hanging fruit i would recommend that you get yourself a nice you know uh, bottle water bottle of some kind that you can refill and maybe stick a number of rubber bands around it that will uh, approximate, you know, some something between 64 and 90 some odd ounces of water every day and take a rubber band off every time that you finish a bottle so that you can keep track and just sip at it all day and, it, and hydrate your body. And you'll notice it makes a huge difference in so many ways. So I would love for at least some of you to consider that if, if um, some of the rest of these suggestions seem like too much right now. One thing at a time is what I say, make one good choice and stick with it for a period of time and then add one more. And then you'll, before you know it, be seeing some major changes. Go ahead and move on from here. Thanks, Amber. Um, so understanding the role of supplementation, uh, we talked about that in the video as well. And um, what I'll say is that when we have these five pillars of health and we have challenges and in, in really, balancing them all together. I think most of us do. I know I do. I mean, I'm aware of all this stuff and I am constantly challenged. Um, so we, most of us need that extra support of some kind of supplementation. And what I like to uh, use with my clients is an isotonic formula, which is delivered in a manner that your body doesn't have to digest it. Um, you simply drink the solution. It's made with a certain amount of powder and a certain amount of water so that when you swallow the solution, your stomach uh, valve opens up and the solution goes straight into your small intestines for absorption. So it's um, the next most bioavailable way to take a nutrient to um, having an actual intravenous, you know, vitamin drip, which is awesome. Uh, the other, you know, tablets and pills often are not high quality and don't break down quickly enough. And as a matter of fact, I guess we can look at the next slide. There are um, a lot of them come out pretty much. Oh, one more, please. I'll, I'll go, get back to D. A lot of them come out of your body pretty much the way they went in. Um, this is a, a, pre a couple of pre-op uh, um, x-rays where you can see the dang things are essentially intact as they're going uh, through the colon up and down to be excreted. And any of you, if you are nurses, you might be familiar with the term bedpan bullets. So, you know, that's kind of gross, but that's what happens. And the other thing I learned is, dang, there's uh, like a landfills. If you go to landfills, I'm sorry, s s a sanitary waste treatment is not where we're not at a landfill we're at a sanitary waste treatment facility they literally have mountains of these pills that they have accumulated from the wastewater it's it's really bad so 
you need to pay attention. And rather than feeling like, okay, I've taken the vitamin, the main thing is absorbing the nutrients that you're taking. So that's that's kind of my messaging for you there. If we can go back to vitamin D one slide, that would be great. So I wanna put in a pitch for vitamin D. It's one of those things in our bodies that is just so important for so many things. There is a receptor in every single cell in your body for vitamin D. And it actually operates more as a hormone in your body. But the long and short of it is that if you don't have um, optimal vitamin D levels, you will uh, potentially open the door for many different bad courses for your health, uh, including a variety of chronic diseases. You can see from the, the blocks on here, the different things that can go wrong, um, as well as the, um, of course, your immune health. This was one of the really the more critical things as we learn more and more about the um, importance of vitamin D. The one thing I wanna share with you on this subject is that many doctors look at vitamin D as sufficient between 30 and 40, okay? And so it's sort of like you saw on that video where RDAs or recommended daily allowances of certain uh, vitamins and minerals aren't for optimal health. They're to prevent those diseases like rickets and scurvy. They're minimum numbers, not optimal numbers. So this is the same thing. 30 to 40 is kind of a minimum, really. And if you want optimal health, if you talk to a lot of different types of uh, physicians who are who have you know got that training in a more holistic point of view, they're looking for you to have 50, 60, 70 um, in your blood test result for your vitamin D for optimal health. Okay, so next time you have an appointment with your doctor, ask for them to check your vitamin D, please. And if it's below 50, you'll need to talk to them about uh, supplementation or doing something else. If there's a way for you to get more sunshine and your body absorbs it well, you know, that's the other thing as we age, our skin isn't as good at converting and, and absorbing to make that vitamin D for us. So there you have it. My pitch for vitamin D, I would like for all of you, all of you to tuck that one away for your uh, next appointment as well. So if we can move on past the x-rays, Amber, thank you. So sleep, obviously huge. Sleep is the time of day when you think you're, you know, if you're one of those type A people and you just go, 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 you think of sleep as a waste of time, right? Like I'll sleep when I'm dead. Have you ever heard anyone say that to you? I have a couple of friends that have said that to me. Well, the point is that your body needs sleep in order to do a million things. It's sort of like, um, you know, if you just, you know, leave it on all the time, is 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 it ever going to have a chance to recover? Is it going to be able to detoxify? These are different things that go on. And actually during your sleep, there are different different stages of detoxification in your brain and in your body that go on. And if you aren't getting that sleep, you're holding more toxins in your body than is healthy. And it, it interferes with your body, getting rid of them. Your body is made to deal with toxins, but there is a point at which it gets overburdened and then those toxins start to get stored where? In your fat cells. Oh my gosh, we're going full circle. And now if they're in your fat cells, your body, when you try to burn fat for fuel, like we talked about earlier, is going to say, nope, we're holding this fat. There's toxins in here. It's not safe. So, you know, you've got to really pay attention to all these things. Um, I love this wheel for 10 tips for better sleep. I love all of those tips. One of the big ones that I'm going to throw out at you is don't put a TV in your room, please. I know how cozy and happy it is to lie in bed and watch a movie or your favorite show and then drift off to sleep. But the problem is that that blue light triggers um, a, a, a wake state in your brain. It interferes with your circadian rhythm, we call it, that, that sleep-wake cycle. And so, you know, when you're watching that blue light, you're just, it's interfering with the quality of your sleep. So you don't want to hold your, you don't want to be looking up your Instagram. You don't want to be looking at your tablet. None of these things should happen at least a half an hour, ideally an hour before you sleep. And if you're like my husband and you just insist on it, you can get yourself some blue blocking glasses like these 
and wear them and they help. I'm not going to tell you this is the best thing to do either, but they help. So, you know, that's the way this goes. We're all about making it work, right? So if whatever you have to do to make it work, um, but as you can see your poor sleep sleep is linked to physical problems such as an, a weakened immune system mental health problems anxiety and depression do we really need to make it easier for ourselves to be anxious and depressed don't you think we have enough to deal with so let's get some sleep and give our, give ourselves a, a fighting chance of having a, a happy day so um, let's move on to the next slide which i i love about stress because that leads into sleeping well doesn't it um, I'm sure most of us have had nights where it was um, something just on our mind that we couldn't get to sleep. Um, but I want you to also frame this to know that not all stress is bad. We have a stress reaction for a reason. And of course, that reason is to address an emergency, a critical, you know, acute uh, stress is is important for you know the child who falls in a pool who doesn't know how to swim and you take that act prompt action to jump in or you know pull somebody out of the way of a moving vehicle or whatever emergency might crop up running from you know you stepped on a beehive and you need to get the heck out away from it you know these are things you need to do but the problem though is that many of us carry this stress throughout the day and it becomes long-term stress as you can see or chronic stress and so those um, hormones that our body pumps out to deal with that acute stress continually pump out when we have chronic stress and those hormones are not good for us to have in our bodies pumping all the time. Uh, one thing that I'll, I'll share with you is just to think of it this way. When you are, when you've stepped on that beehive and you're running from the bees, do you think that your body is focused on digesting the fuel in your, uh, the food that you've just eaten? No. Do you think that your body is focused on, you know, I, optimal reproductive health? No. What about your brain? Do you think your brain is, you know, in full analytical thinking mode when you're pumping those hormones? No, no. The your body is in. I'm I'm getting the heck out of dodge. I need to save my my human. You know, I need to get out of here. Um, so those chronically uh, pumping hormones can interfere with a lot of things in your body. And so it's really important for you to manage stress. You can do this in many ways. I love these tips here. Planning ahead is so important. How many times have you come home with your tank of gas empty and then gotten up the next day and realized you had farther to go than you had gas in your tank? You're running already a little late and shoot, now you have to go get gas. And you know how does that start your day off? Boom, bump bump of cortisol right your stress hormones um so if you'd only thought about it and gone and gassed up the night before you'd be fine wouldn't you well i'm only sharing that example because that's mine that's one of mine and i made myself a new rule where i have to fill up gas when i'm under a quarter tank wherever i am that's my rule so decide which tasks to do first prioritize things and set your attention on just the things that are you've put on the top of your list preparing for things when you know that you could be stressed out you know sometimes it's like a nice herbal tea before you go will help to bring down your stress or you know there's some lovely adaptogenic herbs that that you can incorporate that might like help to step down your level of stress when you know you're going into something that's going to cause that or at least just maybe think ahead and, and visualize the situation and visualize yourself being calm these are different things you can do um, now the other ways you want to manage it of course is when you know you're going to feel stressed you know, just pay attention to that and honor it and know that we all struggle with it and just take a moment to um, either take a walk outside, take that moment to relax um, and just maybe, you know, just take a few deep breaths. I love the uh, box breathing technique. Uh, there are all sorts of different types of box breathing or other breathing techniques. Find one you like, but mine is four in, through the nose, hold four, and then four out through the mouth. Um, and I do that like five times and you flood your body with beautiful oxygen and you really help to shake off that stress that you're feeling. Talking to people, of course, getting active and eating well. You know, when you when you get stressed, don't 
you think sometimes you want to grab a donut or a piece of candy. I know in you know, a lot of people, I used to do that all the time. And um, it really doesn't end out well, does it? Because then you keep wanting more of it and then you don't feel good and you regret doing it and you beat yourself up. It's not good. You know, you just got to give yourself grace. If you did get the donut, go, all right, I got the donut. I'm going to go take a walk now. <laughs> you know, just be be good to yourself. Let's go on to the next slide. So that is uh, the final, you know, kind of summary of our tips for tonight, you guys. And I just want you to, again, move on to the way of thinking. If you are one of those people who feel that there's too much to do here, you know, maybe you're feeling your, your eating, your exercise, all the different things we talked about. Maybe you're feeling you're not on point and there's too much here. I want you to just take little bits of what you heard tonight and just take one of those bits and incorporate them in your lifestyle and if you're already rocking a healthy lifestyle just keep your focus on it and keep consistent with it because that's what's going to bring you like as i say to my friends i'm reaching you know that latter end of those years of life and i'm like i'm going to be sliding into home base i'm not going to be frozen in my rocking chair and with the help of people People like the folks at IRG and their team, you guys seriously have got the most incredible resources. And I, for, for my part, am very happy to take any questions right now. And you see my email address there and whatever other contact information. I'm not sure what IRG might have for emailing out or whatever. You can text me, you can email me, and I'm happy to uh, assist in any way that I can. Um, because it's my mission, really, to help you be your best self. 